talking with the experts. One of the reasons why I build a podcast is because I'm a traditional business owner. <laughs> you know, um, I don't have any visibility online. Like you can see me probably in Trade Center or anywhere in Dubai. And people are like uh, thinking, where do I saw you? Maybe you saw me in an event or maybe you saw me in a trade show, in a conference. And but they didn't know like where I am. Um, so when that um, totally like, you know, starting to what they call it, like decline because of the market goes down, the budget comes down, and then pandemic happens. So what I said, all right, so what do I need to do in order for me to go out there without actually selling, but just communicating, you know, my business and what do I care most about? And that's where it all started. I said, all right, so I'm not confident on video. Right now, I might be, I might look confident because I've been <laughs> doing it since 2019. Um, but when I started, I'm actually really terrible. Like if you listen to the first episode of my podcast, my voice was down, my even my body language was down, and I was just like figuring it out along <laughs> the way. Talking with the experts. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name's Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com and Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners and you can find it on all good podcasting streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today it is my very great pleasure to introduce you to Daniel Francisco. And Daniel is living in Dubai at the moment. And uh, in 2015, after being laid off twice early in his career and having a strong background in uh, the events, trade and publishing industry, he started his own marketing agency. And over the years of hustle and working with corporate brands, he almost came to a point of burnout and uh, put his marriage on shaky ground. And so this wasn't um, a good place to be. So upon some self-reflection, he wanted to build a business that operates just not just on making money, but something a bit, little bit more meaningful. So today we're going to be talking about how to build a meaningful personal brand and uh, podcasting as the new way of networking and um, how to jump ship from your nine to five. So welcome, Daniel, how, and welcome um, and thank you for joining me. Thank you, Rose, for you know having me on your show. I'm excited to be here. Perfect. Perfect. So I guess what happened to you in uh, 2015? Interesting. So basically, before we, we go into 2015, what my story was like any other expat, right? Um, so I'm from the Philippines. Interestingly, in 2010, um, after working two and a half years in a BPO outsourcing industry in the Philippines, I decided to go in Dubai, you know, as, uh, as an expat, basically just, you know, going on vacation. But when I arrived here, uh, which is like 2010, Interestingly, I found that Dubai is a land of opportunity because that was a time where it's starting to picking up from, you know, the market where in the U.S. in 2008, the market crashes. And so, you know, Dubai is the first country to actually recover fast compared to other ones. So when I arrived here, you know, I tried to, you know, um, work uh, in, in an industry where I don't have any experience in. And so, because as young as naive as I am, I feel like I can do anything, right? So I think I was like around 22, 23 back then. So I don't have any much corporate experience. So the culture is totally different. And then when I, when I started working here um, in, in Dubai, basically, you know, uh, I started to become a little bit arrogant. So that was like my first job. So I've been, I've been laid off. Um, first one and then it humbled me and then the first the second one so I started I hope so one of my principles if you wanted to start a career on something is that you need uh, to start on small uh, companies because in small companies they teach you different things than you work with big companies so I uh, you know, on my second job, I've been laid off in 2013. So that was like a small company. So just imagine it's a husband and wife business. And then I was, I was a third person. I was a number three. Then we grew up the company until 30 person. And then at the end of like three years, I was like burned out. I don't know what to do. And I said, you know, I, I'm done, you know. And instead, when I submitted my resignation, <laughs> my, my boss back then, instead of like accepting it, he called our HR and said, you know, tell Daniel he's fired. So I was like, what? 
<laughs> exactly. Um, like because like in any other companies, right? If you um, if you resign, definitely you will have your end of employee benefits mm. because you work for so long in a company. But then again, the company twisted a little bit, saying that all right, your performance is not good. Um, you know, you're gonna be laid off, and you don't you don't you won't receive anything like a single penny. And interestingly, one of the things that really made me I think jump into entrepreneurship is because when I when I received that call, um, that that call that said I'm laid off, like you know, the moment I submitted my resignation, I went home and I received the call. He said, Daniel, tomorrow you need to leave Dubai. And I, I said, What? I need to leave Dubai? What do you mean? Like, you know, we can only give you a passport and you need to go outside Dubai. If you want to work here, you need to find another way. And I was like, wow. So after working for three years for the company, treating like as a family and helping grow the company, I was treated like, you know, a garbage, you can, you can oh, say. I'm sorry awful. for the term. Yeah, it's really awful. I really felt bad. And it, it took me a, a time to get peace with it. Um, but then it took me as, upon as well a self uh, self reflection, saying that you know if I wanted to live uh, my life on own terms, like I don't want someone to breathe down my neck, should I consider starting my own agency or start my own company? Because if you wanted to start a company, you know you need to consider like what are your strengths, what are your, what are things that you love. So like any other you know, first time business owners, we start to deliver a service. Right. Um, but I didn't know uh, or any have any experience actually to run a proper company. So what I did, I said, I don't have any funds. You know, I have zero business background. I, you know, when I came back to Dubai, so I just stopped over from Hong Kong. Actually, it's one uh, really interesting because when I left um, on an airplane in Dubai, one of my friends are telling me because I play in a band in a church. I say, where are you? You know, it's time for a practice for a band. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> I'm in Hong Kong. Like, what? <laughs> Were I just like talking to you yesterday? <laughs> no, I, you know, um, things happen. So, you know, when, it, when I arrived back in Dubai, I said, uh, I'm going to work for a small startup that can actually teach me how to run a proper business, how to run operations, how to, you know, sell and how to collect money on time. Because those are like the three basic things. And I don't know, have you seen uh, Rose, the, the movie founder? No, I haven't. The no. McDonald's founder. So interesting because when I arrived in, uh, I arrived in Dubai, so I did, you know, I, I submitted all my CVs and all that. So I decided to, um, luckily, this this company that actually my last nine to five hired me because those founders that are in there have two um, different generational gap. One is a little bit older, so a little bit 50 more on the conservative side, more like, you know, Daniel, you need to deliver results if you wanted to continue working here. The other one is similar age as I am, but he started um, opening up his company since I think 19 or 20. They're both from Finland. So if you imagine, you imagine um, you interviewed people from Norway, mm. you, you can imagine they're really like conservative type of people like with this mug, you know? Mm. Um, so so I, I, I worked with them for two and a half years and that's where the time where, all right, um, I'm going to treat myself as a sponge, you know, forget everything that I know and try to learn as much as I can. And then at, at the process of doing that, that is in the publishing industry, you know, just and now you introduce me as building a personal brand, because now, you know, when people publish content, people think that you need to like position yourself like as an expert, you do this, do that. But actually, there's a lot more deeper than that. You know, because we are tired of reading articles of millionaires, billionaires, like how good they are. Like, <laughs> really, nobody cares. Like, even when I read, you know, uh, articles like that, all I see is like, blah, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But if you heard, heard someone like, you know, um, all right, so this person, he or she cares about this cause, he or she, you know, speaks about the truth. And, and you, when you search deep, like on, on Google, you go onto like the tent page. That's where like the real <laughs> information <laughs> is. Maybe like 10 years ago they, that they didn't know, right, <laughs> um, was there. So that, that's where I all um, started my career. And it's been, I think, so I started 2015. Um, so it's almost six years now, or five and a half years, I guess, uh, since uh, me and my wife started uh, the business. Oh, wow, that's quite a journey, really. But yeah, it's pretty bad when they, you know, you hand your resignation in and then they said, oh, you're sacked. That's um, 
just a bit wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But anyway, all right. So tell me a little bit more about um, the clients that you service and, you know, what do you do for them? Yeah, that's a good question. So basically in, in our, the, the clients that we work with are business owners who own a, a business, either six to eight figure business or someone who's just starting out in maybe in the first or second year of business. Now, most um, business owners, when they start a business, uh, even the, you know, the most successful ones, maybe they have um, good reputation offline. Like they have like solid background. They have the right partners, the clients, the vendors. But when the COVID happens, um, most people are like having a hard time to communicate what their business is all about because there's no more meeting online. I'm sorry, there's more, no more meeting face-to-face, -face, no more hand-holding. So how do you bridge that gap between offline to online is we help them build their own personal brand. And like I mentioned earlier, personal brand is more than, you know, um, positioning yourself as an expert. It means about building trust credibility and authority. And for us, we deep dive in on the things that they really care about. Like, you know, if, if you put money aside, why would a company or why would someone wanted to work with you? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, if you search that person's name on Google, what is the first thing that you see? Is it like a complaint? Is it like a good review? Is the review even legit? Or, or if you go to the LinkedIn profile, is it consistent to what they say on their website? You know, um, because right now there's a lot of information um, going on, but the, the challenge is how do we, you know, um, eliminate or you can say like filter out what people are really saying versus what the real meaning behind it. So yeah. we, help, we help them out, you know, uh, craft, those um, b uh, personal brand in an authentic way and make sure that it is uh, like a not like a, a true reflection of who they are offline um, because most people when they say like all right Daniel do I really need to talk about this do I really need to talk about maybe my cats do I really need to talk about you know the the like a non-profit that I support with I said if you it, it might not be relevant to your business but you are dealing with people because people deal with people. So if they know more about you, it's just more easier for them to resonate with you and your business. And like, you know, I don't know some of the brands that you probably know, um, personal brand has been going on for years. Hmm. They, you know, people thought like di digital reputation, you know, even uh, you're so, so you're from Australia, right? Yeah. Yeah. So personal brand, Richard Branson. Virgin has a good, you know, reputation because Richard Branson speaks all the time. He doesn't even need to do that anymore, um, but he does still continue it because the brand represents him or he rep him represents a brand. Like even Gordon Ramsay said when he opened his restaurant here, like people, when they come into his restaurant, he wants them to smell that he is there inside the kitchen, even yeah. though he's not there. <laughs> so so it's, it's a similar thing. Yeah. So um, I guess uh, you, you and I are both into podcasting and you called yours is the host of The Drive to Succeed, which yes. is a great name. Um, <laughs> why, is it, um, why is it the new way of networking and, and, and how can we build real relationships doing that? Exactly. Because back, back in the day, um, you know, when you wanted, so for instance, for me, for, uh, for instance, one of the reasons why I build a podcast is because I'm a traditional business owner. <laughs> you know, um, I don't have any visibility online. Like you can see me probably in trade center or anywhere in Dubai and people are like uh, thinking, where do I saw you? Maybe you saw me in an event or maybe you saw me in a trade show, in a conference. And, but they didn't know like where I am. Um, so when that, um, totally like, you know, starting to, what do you call it? It's like decline because of the market goes down, the budget comes down and then pandemic happens. So what I said, all right, so what do I need to do in order for me to go out there without actually selling, but just communicating, you know, my business and what do I care most about? And that's where it all started. I said, all right, so I'm not confident on video right now. I might be, I might look confident because I've been mm -hmm. doing it since 2019. Um, but when I started, I'm actually really terrible. Like if you listen to the first episode of my podcast, 
my voice was down, my even my body language was down, and I was just like figuring it out along the <laughs> way. <laughs> so, and I said, I cannot talk for an hour. Um, I cannot talk for at least, I, I even have fear of public speaking. So I said, I just started, I wanted to start a podcast, interview people, let me go on silent mode, let me go on sponge mode. It's, it brings me back to, you know, similar thing as a student, right? When you're curious, you just start to ask something. And for me to develop relationships, um, like I've spoken to speakers who spoke alongside Tony Robbins, Richard Branson, you know, the celebrity speakers that most people probably wouldn't heard of. But in their industry or in their own like, you know, own bubble, they might be like celebrities inside there. Um, so I wouldn't have access to them if I don't have my podcast. Right. Um, and right nowadays, you know, before, if you wanted to interview them, you need to be a part of like a good you know, media outlet like Forbes, Entrepreneur, um, CNN or whatever. Um, but now if you have your own podcast and they see it, all right, so you interview this person, you interview this person. So you collaborated with this person, you know, um, it just easier for you to network um, and then build trust and, you know, open up opportunities with them. So that's, that's how it. Great stuff. Thank you. It's, um, it's, um, that's a, a good one. I hadn't thought about, uh, about it like that. I mean, I've met 160 people since last year. And, um, you know, so some of them we still keep in touch. And I've actually done work for um, outside some of the of podcast them. for them. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting um, it's an interesting way to network. But, uh, yeah, so um, and, and I love doing what I do because I had no idea what I was doing when I started. I just started. I just went and bought a microphone, a camera and said, well, let's just do this. <laughs> <laughs> And here I am, still here. Never mind. Yeah. And but by I the guess... way, congratulations on having 160 episodes. Um, that that's like really tells you more about like how you make the show consistent. Because most most people doesn't know how hard it is to produce consistent podcasts and even find guests consistently. <laughs> yeah, it is. I I'm I'm grateful for pe people like Matchmaker and <laughs> and and Audrey and uh, and all those sorts of places. And word of mouth, I've actually been referred by other. Um, previous podcast hosts they've said oh look I've got someone you should interview so it's just snowballed it's it's really taken off it's I, yeah. I can't believe that it's just you know gone as well as it has that's networking by the way <laughs> well yeah I guess it is yeah <laughs> so I guess um, the next question is how does someone um, you know leave their normal nine to five and and actually turn their passion into a business Exactly. So uh, that's a good question. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in, in the episode, when I started my own business, I actually didn't um, start, like quit my job, quit my nine to five immediately. So what I did is I look, uh, because if you lack a skill set, no matter how good you are in a certain things, you need to wear different hats. Right. If you own a business, you need to learn how to do sales, you do you know, to do marketing, you need to learn how to present, um, collect money on time, you know, pay, you know, whoever's like working with you as well. Um, but the thing is, where, during the time back then, I didn't have any experience. So like I mentioned, I worked for a, a startup company and I tried to learn everything um, inside and out of the company. And then what I did is I focused on four things. Right. So number one is what is the problem that I can solve? So if I am, you know, uh, I'm providing a service, what is the problem that I can solve with that industry? Now, most people will say like, you know, um, Daniel, you know, I don't know, maybe you, is, that might not be a problem, right? So how do you validate a problem? By offering something in return, it might be a fee, a fee or for a free, right? Mm -hmm. And then, then if you get it for a fee, then, you know, could do this for you. Um, so that's one thing. So problem number two is you take inventory of what are the things that excites you the most? Um, maybe it can be your passion. You know, maybe some of, some of the people that I work with, they're passionate working with moms. So instead of like targeting you know, the full um, people, like, because most challenges well with business owners, like, who is your target market? And they're going to say everyone. You cannot, you cannot communicate with everyone. You need to select a specific market and then work on that. Once you build your stake on the ground, you try to, you know, make it wider. Because if you try to communicate, um, you know, to everybody or everyone, 
you know that's what what my mistake is as well because i was like chasing here chasing there instead of like focusing on one thing and one thing only so that's number two um passion you know you need to learn what excites you the most right and uh, number three like what is the purpose you're building a business the, um earlier you met, we talked about um you know um building something that you love Right. For me, when I got married, um, when I, me and my wife got married, everything changes everything because me as an eldest of the family, you know, being an independent emotionally as well, you know, living up in a broken and dysfunctional family, I got to make decisions by myself. But then when I got married and she also quit her job to help me in the business, <laughs> that's what it becomes tricky. Like, all right. So if we're building our, our marriage, so we're, we're always uh, getting married. I'm sorry. We're almost getting um five years now uh, since we got married but you just don't have proper context <laughs> um, so, so we're building a, a we're building a life together and we're building a business together so what is the purpose of us working together um, and how can we maintain that you know um, purpose where we're just not looking beyond to pay the bills but we're actually looking beyond how can we create a culture for our life for our marriage for our business so that's one of the like tough questions you need to think about because in the beginning, you know, they some maybe some people like me um, can relate that you know you might be laid off, so why not start something, right? But aside from that, you really need to think um, what is beyond that. And last but not the least, uh, positioning. Like, how do you position yourself? Do you work with big companies? Do you work with small companies or small business owners? Right. Or how do you, you know, maybe you're talking about like dogs, you know, you walk dogs or something, maybe, but you walk dogs for CEO. So doesn't have time to take care of their pets. So, you know what I mean? You cannot be, you know, like everybody to everybody. So <laughs> Yeah, it is a little bit hard. It is. I mean, the services that I offer in my business are suitable to everybody, but I've had to actually target them in the beginning to, um, to suit a, a certain type of, um, business owner so yeah it and that used to really bother me a lot but um it, it it's a good um strategy to have because you're right you can just you can widen your pool once you get your strategy in place so yeah yes hmm. so um other than on your podcast um mm -hmm. tell me a little bit more about where people can find you all right. So uh, they can, I'm pe uh, sorry, most people can find me. I'm pretty much active on LinkedIn. So if they search me on Daniel Francisco or on Instagram at Daniel underscore Francisco underscore, or they can visit uh, the website at www.danmediagroup.com. So that is my agency's uh, website. So again, we focus on personal branding, podcasting, and PR. Um, and my podcast website is the drive to succeed dot com so and and also you know i'm pretty much available on all those platforms so if they just send me a dm or just send me a voice note um i'll be happy to respond as fast as i can and if you have any questions related to those topics just anything that you think that i can help you with related to podcast personal brand and pr then do, do send me a message and also rose uh, thank you so much for letting me on your show i hope your audience benefited from it and learned a lot from my story. Um, I'm pretty much transparent and <laughs> trying to be authentic as much yeah, as well, possible. Well, that's the only way to be, isn't it? Authentic and transparent. Now, to, have you got any last words of wisdom, Daniel? Yes. Oh, any last words of wisdom? So I think one of, uh, I, I would say is that like one of the, I always ask this, like, in, in my podcast, I always ask, what's your main drive to succeed, right? Um, for me, if I can just answer that, my main drive to succeed is build a life, a business, a marriage that you can be really proud of. Like, you know, when you remove all of that, what is left, that, you know, what is left aside from that, that is what you need to build. You need to build looking towards because, you know, your lifetime might be limited on earth, but your kids coming, you know, in, in the future generation will carry that. So make sure that you build something that you will be proud of. Ah, that's lovely. Yes, that, that, that's some very wise words. Thank you for sharing that. All right, thank Daniel, you, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's absolute pleasure as well, Rose, and looking forward to hear uh, more of your episode in the future. Thank you. So talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.